Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode uh, 467, featuring a look at the game Menzo Baranza. Uh, now, if your title means anything to you, it's probably because you're a fan of Ari Salvatore and the Underdark, the Drow, the Dark Elves, all that good stuff. Uh, and this is a game that came out sometime in 93 or 94, I found different dates for it, uh, by Dreamforge Entertainment. And the idea was to make a, a 3D-based, continuous, fluid movement uh, game set in that universe and based on the Ari Salvatore's work and his almost famous character Drizzt is actually a playable character in the game which is super super cool. Uh, anyway uh, I play it here for a few hours we go over it I'd give you what I like and don't like about the game we look at some of the contemporary reviews and much much more and uh, following that review we'll be going back into some of uh, my homebrew adventures I got a brand new uh, homebrew ready to go all kegged up, ready to uh, put in the glass. Uh, so stay tuned for that, plus a few other surprises and much, much more. Anyway, we got a lot to cover here. So without further ado, here is Menzo Baranzan. And here we go, folks, with a game called Menzo Baranzan. Uh, this is a game that came out, uh, I believe, in yeah, 1993, it says there. There's some different dates you can find. I think Wikipedia puts it at 94. Uh, so your guess is as good as mine, but it's a... Uh, it's, it's one of the lesser known, I guess, titles in the SSI fantasy series. Of course, they're better known for their gold box games like Pool of Radiance, the black box games. <laughs> I have the Beholder, which were also, by the way, uh, not done in-house, but by Westwood Studios. And for these, they turned to this company called Dreamforge Entertainment. Do a couple of games for them, Dungeon Hack and Menzo Baranson. And I covered Dungeon Hack a few episodes ago. Uh, that's a really fun, procedurally generated, sort of basically uh, Dungeon Master with procedural generation. Uh, but it's got the step movement through the dungeons, grid-based movement, whatever you want to call that. Uh, Menzo Baranza uh, will have, uh, that is an option, you could do the step movement. But they also have a more smooth, continuous movement. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure <clears throat> how successful it is, but it seems like they were trying to ride some of that. Uh, hype over the Ultima Underworld series. And so as you can see, you pick this up and Dungeon Hack for six bucks here at GOG. That's, you know, easy purchase. <laughs> I think it's well worth that. And it will come with all the clue books and manuals that you'll need to uh, uh, to play. Now, one of the reasons this game, I think, gets kind of a tarnished reputation is that, as you'll see, they make a big deal out of the fact that it's based on R.A. Salvatore's work and Druzit, famous uh, character. Great series, by the way. If you haven't read... Uh, R.A. Salvatore, his books about Drizzt, there's many, many to choose from, but I highly recommend it. Uh, I really love that series, the way that uh, R.A., I guess, will uh, do this thing where you get some action, but then you get these these uh, pages where it's sort of like Drizzt's diary, <laughs> for lack of a better word, uh, but it gives you a lot of insight into his character, and it's just it's really well done, and I think most people uh, come away from those really liking Drizzt and wanting to read more about him but it's 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 really good novels but anyway uh, a lot of the criticism stem from this idea that they kind of set the game up to be this uh, you know really big epic story it's going to have a uh, drizzit and it's going to be i guess people were expecting it to be just as good as one of those r.a salvatore novels you know and good luck with that you know i can uh, i was thinking earlier today but the only series i know that really lives up to that or the only game rather was the uh, betrayal of Crondor. You know, I think Neil Halford's probably kind of alone <laughs> in being able to take this, you know, a novel series that somebody wrote and really just do it justice uh, with a story of his own that, that holds up. You know, even the author, Feist, was impressed with what Neil did. Uh, not so <laughs> uh, with this game. Uh, you can see it gets bashed here. Scorpia says it's got some nice features but not supported by a strong story. Basically just a hack and slash product which I guess is kind of interesting considering they had just done that Dungeon Hack game before this. <laughs> I don't know, maybe she just had that on the brain. 
Uh, let's see. Somebody, yeah, uh, Andrew Wright of PC Zone considered it a case of dumb dungeoneering, stylishly put together, tries to be Ultima Underworld, and fails miserably. <laughs> well, it must have been a real, you know, punch in the face to read that review back in the uh, these Dreamforge guys. Uh, you know, most of them also complain. You know, they don't like the uh, the story too much, hack and slash, etc. Uh, and they did talk about it doesn't compare favorably to Ravenloft, which is the next series I want to get into here on the show, by the way. So I'm going to save any commentary on that for later. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, when I'm confronted with a situation like this, I always think maybe, you know, history has been kinder to it. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, looking back on it today, how well does it hold up? Were those reviews a little bit too nasty? Were they just making an apples and oranges comparisons to other games? And really, this is you know, holds up pretty well on its own. Uh, we will see. We'll get all into it. And just uh, one last thing before we dive in. Of course, if you are playing this at all, you need to have the manuals and the clue book, I think, is kind of essential for this as well. Uh, this comes in the GOG package. You have to look for it in the folders. But it will give you a little bit of background on what's happening and tell you how to use the interface. The interface for this game... It's pretty bad. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that. It, it's kind of a... Uh, it doesn't really spell out much stuff. You have to figure out some stuff on your own that's... Uh, you know, buttons should basically should be labeled. There's not a lot of feedback from the interface about things. Like even like saving, it doesn't tell you, oh, save so, <laughs> the game has saved. <laughs> you know, there's just no feedback. And it's like that for a lot of things. Uh, but once you figure it out, I think it will be... Uh, Basically, I'm going to just tell you up front, I've definitely got some problems with this game. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to pretend like it's all good, but uh, you can certainly get a lot more pleasure out of it if you do read the novel, uh, novels, <laughs> if you read the manual carefully. Uh, it's not too long. Let's see what else here. And then the clue book is actually kind of essential. Because you know, a lot of the stuff, you know, if you're playing without a clue book, you're just trying to figure out, like, how, where do I go? What do I do? Even if you take careful notes, I think it's easy to get turned around and not really know what, what's happening. Uh, there are The game does have a few little prompts in there to say maybe you should take the jump potion. <laughs> don't even get me started on that. Uh, but I just, to me, I don't consider this cheating. It's just kind of like, you know, this, this clue book is basically stuff that would be built into a modern game. You know, a modern game would have a journal and tell you, like, you need to go talk to this guy, you need to go do this next, you know. Uh, they didn't have that back then. Uh, instead, they expected you to pony up for this uh, printed clue book, which was this was sold separately, usually. And I always just found them kind of, just I kind of factored it into the price of the game. You get the game, you get the clue book, you'll probably have more fun than just wandering around and not knowing what the hell you're doing. Okay, I think that will do it. So let's go ahead and get the game running, and we'll see what it's all about. All right, here we go. Let us launch. And it's got some nice, nice uh, intro scenes, so we'll definitely want to uh, watch those carefully. Probably some of the best parts of the game. Dreamforge Entertainment. We can't spell entertainment. Ah, uh, there's that AD&D logo. You probably should have held that up a little bit longer. Men's Oberanzan. You know, it's kind of funny. It's called men. It should be like women Baranzan, considering, uh, anyway. You know, I might just scooch myself over a little bit. All right, so what? <laughs> what is that thing? <laughs> Here comes uh, a spear. Yeah, that's enough to kill this thing, apparently. Is it just me, or does this dragon look a little bit like something you would encounter at a Chinese restaurant? <laughs> this is more like, you know what I'm talking about, those Chinese dragons that you see? What is it? I don't know. I don't think it's a dragon at all, though. It's got legs, no wings. There goes a spell. <laughs> a little blob. 
stab. Okay, so not a whole lot spelled out here for you about what just happened. What the hell's going on? But we here we go. That evening. Dun, dun. That is, I love this style of graphics of this, this era. It's, it's like charmingly crude. This early 3D stuff. You're probably like rocking a voodoo card or rage. Pay attention to where that well is. <laughs> I like the guy stabbed himself. Should have got my cool pants. It's a weird style of dancing. Let's draw. There we go. <laughs> so, so basically, what as far as I can tell, we're kind of these adventurers. We, we come into this town, we kill that praying mantis-looking Chinese dragon thing, uh, and then the drow show up and kidnap a bunch of people, set the place on fire. Uh, and I think that's probably enough background. Here's a picture of lovely painting of Drizzt. You know, I just I love that artwork. Well, hear me. Enemies hide among the shadows. They move in ways we cannot understand. My queen, have we displeased you? Sounds like a meeting of Congress. Matron Malice has set fate in motion. Her warriors seek out Drift to burden the traitorous son. In this, she does more than she knows. Sounds problematic, but yeah, I, I really enjoy the, these this character creation process. Again, you can tell they really a lot of these games. It seems like they start off with a lot of steam and they're doing a lot of cool stuff with like 3D graphics. This looks like Silicon Graphics workstation or crate type stuff to me. Uh, I think it will probably lose a little steam as we go, but we'll, we'll see. So yeah, you get two choices: you get this pink guy or the green lady, male or female. Sitting here in this little bowl. <laughs> and what's going on back there? Make known the race of the first character. Now, the race is apparently associated with a melting candle. So you get, I got six choices: gnome, human, dwarf, half elf, elf, and halfling. Now, one of the things that's kind of stinky about this game is you you only get to create two characters and then you've got a fairly limited selection of viable NPCs. So you might want to be thinking about those NPCs even though you have no idea what they're going to be at this point. But the advice I read was to say, said to make one fighter type and then one mage. Uh, you know, of course you can do whatever you want. I will do a dwarf fighter So dramatic. 
show the class of the first character. I've got no class. So you see some of these will be limited. Don't you just love this? It's, it feels like mist or something, or like Riven. Even the music's kind of a, a little bit of a mist-like quality to it. Really sets a good vibe. So I think a dwarf won't be able to be anything but a cleric and a, and a fighter, or thief, I guess, in this game. Let's go with the fighter. And of course, you, as you know from D and A, D and D, the dwarves have a good poison resistance. And I'm just guessing that's going to be a big deal in the game, set in the Underdark. The alignment. Yeah, chaotic goods okay for a fighter. Make known the face of the first character. Get to pick our face. This is probably like 90% of their budget right here. <laughs> yeah, pretty, you know, not not a huge oh, I guess we get some more options. I didn't see that button before. Okay. So a decent number of... One second. Alright, so to continue, looking for the perfect dwarf. I gotta... This guy looks kinda... He <laughs> looks a little bit like Neil with an eye patch. <laughs> you know, I kinda like this guy. He just looks like... That's probably what I'll look like in another, you know, 10, 20 years. <laughs> It's like he's a homesteader. Probably has some, some goats. Here, I got some bees. A beekeeper. Make my own honey. Would you like a little shine? Looks like the kind of guy that would. <laughs> and knows his way around a brew. <laughs> now, this is kind of fun, too. Look at these dice. I love a game, you know, especially an AD&D game, where they really kind of bring the dice into the interface. Because, I mean, it's, it's a big part of D&D, right? Of course, the, this is the D20 system, obviously. Now, we can just sit here and roll up our character of our dreams. Probably don't want to go too crazy, make it too easy. So it's not actually... We could roll, or you can just do this and try to get a you know, pretty good character. And I think it's probably worthwhile to get 18 and <laughs> some of these, because... You know, this, this game is not going to be easy. It's not baby you in any way. Yeah, I think we'll keep old Matt. And I want to make a little companion for him. I went to the Patreon site and found the latest uh, Ratrums. So we'll grab them. Grab a character to help out Matt here. His name will be. Well, maybe I'll save his name. Keep you in suspense. It's probably a good thing they don't have like seven characters. <laughs> this would get tedious. It's okay the first time, but man. And I was thinking of a gnome clerk. Even though they say to play a mage. You know, I wonder if there's, there's probably a way to multi-class. I wonder how you specify that. It might be nice to have a cleric mage. Show the class of the second character. Woo! Let's see, is there a way to have like a half and half? Don't see any options like that. Of course, it could just be the racial thing. Let's just go cleric. It's three-dimensional. Wow. Make known the face of the second character. Where have I seen this before? This is so, like, early 90s. <laughs> uh, let's see. I like this guy. Where is his name? What is his political party? 
That's inferred in alignment. Okay, for our cleric, let's go. I want all this maxed out, as well as wisdom. I think dwarves have a hard cap at wisdom. I guess that's what that is. It'll make him a little bit handsomer than mad, I guess. Intelligence 11, that doesn't sound good. Dexterity. Oh, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I'm telling you, this game is hard. You probably don't want to go in there with, like, quote unquote realistic scores. Rahul! Yes, Rahul, you have won the match up contest. And your your prize is getting to play Go to Underdark with Matt and Barton. Ugh. I don't know if that's a good reward. Yes. Wow! Whoa! Incredible. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the tavern is all but des how's the my character talking? The tavern is all but deserted now. Where but this morning so many toasted to our health. What ill wind, I wonder, has gathered up our friends and whisked them from us? Perhaps the innkeeper would know. Yeah, because that's how Matt the dwarf talks. <laughs> At least the ill wind. <laughs> he looks like the kind of guy that would have know a thing or two about ill winds. You know? Okay. Now let's talk about movement in this game. Uh, this is something you'll probably either love or hate. Now, one thing is you, just like an Ultima Underworld, you can sort of just move the mouse around, hold the left button down, and, you know, move it like that. So you get to the corners of the screen and it changes, and then I think if you move it there, it kind of slowly moves. If you go all the way to the, you know, top of the screen, it's a little bit faster, so... You know, that's fine. It works pretty well, I think. That's probably how I would want to control it. The other option is to hold the right... Let's see if I can remember how to do it this way. So I think you hold the... Maybe it's left button. Okay, I'm already forgetting how to use that other... <laughs> Some other way to do it. Let me see. Maybe you click on this. Yeah, stepping mode on. Okay, let me show you this. So with this mode... This is just like a dungeon hack or dungeon master. You move in uh, steps, or you can use the number pad. So this is a very efficient way to do business. You know, it's not quite as graphically impressive, but... <laughs> you know, it's faster to move that way. But I know there's like a, there's a third option here, if I could figure out how to... I think you hit maybe space bar. Yeah, there we go. So if you hit the space bar, now you don't have to hold the button down. You just... It's kind of like mouse look, I suppose. Of course, you can't look up and down. And then to move forward, you hold the right mouse button down. Oh. Yeah, so it's... I don't know what they call this mode. But you can move back and forward. Just with the mouse, or you can hold the right mouse button down to, to move like that. So all of those, I think, have their merits. I just probably think just this default way to move is, is pretty nice, and you can supplement it with the uh, number pad if you want to. I kind of feel bad using the step mode since you know they work so hard on this continuous 3D. And then uh, some of the other quirks about this interface, it's actually pretty clunky. You know, like how you open up sacks, things you gotta go here, click on that little hand button, then you can put stuff in your sack. Hit the hand again to uh, to open it. You know, ranged weapons. They, you know, some of the FAQs I read. You know, apparently there's some monsters where it is an advantage to use ranged weapons, but they are a incredible pain. <laughs> you got to go pick up the ammo every after every fight. It's super tedious. Uh, so you probably don't want to mess with those. Just stick with the melee weapons. And the other bit of weirdness here. It's like, where is your save, like your system menu? You might think that's what that is, but this is just like some options you can set. The system menu is actually this not this completely unlabeled button. You might not even know it was a button <laughs> up in the corner. You can see there you have your rest parade memorizer, auto map, 
let's go ahead and save it here. You can see I had another game going. The auto map is pretty nice. Now again, this is pretty pretty ahead of its time. It certainly would have been an impressive feature back in, when this game came out. You know, and this, all these options to print. Now, I made the mistake of hitting that print logo, that print icon during dialogue. I just wanted to see what it would do. <laughs> it just totally messed everything up. So I don't know if that's just not integrated well in the DOS box at the moment or, or what, but I would just not even consider pressing that unless you want your game to mess up. I can't even imagine the, the hell of trying to get this <laughs> dot matrix printer working with, you know, uh, DOS box these days. But this is what I like about this interface is you can uh, write comments on it. So just like in, I think it was Dungeon Hack, we were playing like this. You can just make your little notes there and then up here somewhere you can say tavern. That's probably not that useful, but you know, it's a good way to stay organized. Uh, you know, even if you're using a clue book, this is not, not a bad way, not a bad thing to be aware of. And I like the fact that it's got a key there. So very well done. You know, very well done uh, auto map, especially for the time. And then finally our spells will be here. And you just have to click down here. It doesn't automatically pause. Some of it will. If it, if it has a targeted spell, it will pause the game. But otherwise the combat will be in real time. Now I think we can go ahead and play around with some of these spells. So here we are with uh, Rahul. He's got this draw dexterity. I don't know why that... I think that's like a dexterity buff. I don't think we'll be using that all that much. Prayer's good. Light's good. Cure light wounds good. Protection from evil. <clears throat> you know, I think I'll trade that for another cure light wounds because that was just... Uh, you know, bless is a good spell too. Well, I guess we get five total. Let's do two, three. Let's do a... Uh, detect magic for one of them. Let's see, we get five of these spells. Slow poison. I don't remember getting poisoned at this point of the game, so maybe save that, but aid's a good one, and you know sometimes a spiritual hammer is really good, but not in this game. Let's see, level three, right? Uh, venom immunity, so you can see all these poisons and like venom spells. That's a little clue. I actually think the magical vestments is a good spell quite sure how long it lasts, but it really lowers your AC nicely. Okay, so then we just rest. No, we shouldn't rest before the fire is put out. The village's winter stores are in danger. The building must be saved. Oh yeah, we gotta do the we gotta do the buckets. <laughs> I forgot about the buckets. How could I forget about the buckets? Okay, let's go ahead and save that again. Oh, and the, another cool thing is this. This is a quick save. It's, again, not there's no tool tips, no labels. And if you hit this, it doesn't even say, like, quick saved. Just nothing. And I also forgot to mention there's a, yet another way to move around is with the classic Dungeon Master style buttons here. Now, I don't know who, what sane person would want to move the game, <laughs> control it like this. <laughs> it's extremely clunky. Maybe if you had a, maybe they were thinking ahead of, like, touch screens. You know, maybe work well with that. Okay, let's go talk to this guy. Innkeeper, by what prank have you emptied this place? We have hours of celebration we might yet enjoy. Yes, Rahul, <laughs> we know where your head's at. <laughs> Rahul's a party animal. Uh, come now, we've known you for years. What is the trouble? So the dialogue a bit overwrought. You know, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that Ari Salvatore didn't write any of this. Voice acting is pretty good. Man, this is some truly wretched dialogue. 
I mean, I just gotta say. <laughs> Not, go, there's a, buildings are burning down. Go put out the fire. No, it's, uh, take them and end that unwelcome light. I mean, I don't think this, you'd have to dig pretty hard to find this crappy <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> uh, you know, what's that book? The Great Worm or something like that? Wormeros, Worm, The Great Worm, Oberos. It was kind of written like this, just painfully. Uh, painful. Um, but the voice acting, is, on the other hand, is quite, quite nice. So I guess you got to take the bad with the good. Okay, let's see. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to control this bad boy. Let's take another look. Oops. Take another look at our map here. Okay, I don't see anything there to collect. So we've got to go get those buckets. Alright, you can see how dark it is. We can try to cast a light spell. Unfortunately, it does not last for it. buckets. And here's my other big pet peeve with this game is the uh, inventory system is just a pain in the butt. And while I'm also complaining I could say there's no way to, there's no place to sell things and buy things. Like, what? You know that's kind of lame even for this this era. Uh, there should at least be a store so there's really no need to be hauling around a bunch of uh, uh, items if you're not going to use them. And pay very close attention to where they tell you things are because you will need that especially if you're not using a clue book. There is a well to the east near the center of town. We'll find empty buckets near it and we can fill them at the well. It's a vital clue. <laughs> you gotta be very careful not to click too quickly and miss something like that. So for now, we'll just put them in the inventory. So you can tell they were really proud of this like bucket mechanic because we're gonna <laughs> this is a big part of the game. <laughs> you know, and I've done more tedious stuff than that. World of Warcraft quests, so this is not that beyond the pale. You know, I just, I yearn for a mouse look <laughs> just WASD controls. <laughs> you know, the problem with this, using the arrow keys, is that, or the number pad, is it, it goes too fast. And it's very hard to get precise control with this method. I want to head towards the, f the well, if we can find it. Let's see, this is probably the well. And these little orange dots are things we can pick up. This looks like we need to turn. Look for the well. Oh, I think I see a drow there. What is this? No, that's a person. <laughs> okay. Is the well. There's a draw. Alright, so let's do the combat. So we just click on him and it'll automatically hit attack with a weapon. And that's it. Now we didn't cast any spells, but you know, that's a... Maybe next battle we'll try that. We can get it ready here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a protection from evil. Not sure how long it lasts. And I guess we could find that out quick. So I think that's what this does. Protection from evil. It doesn't tell me how long it's got left to go. I can also do an aid spell. Him. And we could save the prayer for when we <laughs> really need it. Huh? Okay, where are we? Looks, I'm thinking, is that the... Maybe that's not the well, after all. He said it was in the center of town. Well, I'm thinking that's the well. So it's a little bit to the southeast. For some reason, I have a very tricky time getting around this game. Well, I guess that's definitely not the well. So, where is that damn well? Oh, here's another fight. They're pretty good looking monster graphics. Man, these are not very impressive for Drow, are they? <laughs> well, let's head on over to the... Oh, there's the well. There we go. 
Hurry, the storehouse is on fire. It lies to the southeast. All the village's winter food stores are within. Not sure how Rahul would know that, but he just does. Here's some more buckets. So let's go ahead and get these empty buckets. Menzo Barans and ladies and gentlemen. You will get the buckets. We're going to need all of these. So there's a fire, eh? Well, here are buckets enough to end the threat. So there's a fire, eh? <laughs> Canadian all of a sudden. <laughs> what would they do without us? We'll have it quick. We'll have it quickly oot. We'll have it quickly oot. Hey, if you're going to beat Rahul, I don't know, Rahul. You just suddenly went Canadian, buddy. Just suddenly went full Canadian. Okay, let's get these. I think I found all the, the buckets. Benzo Barans and ladies and gentlemen. Oh, okay, there's the well. Are you ready for this? Can you handle this? <laughs> okay, so you got to get the bucket. Put it in his hand. Like that. We'll have our shields, I guess, while this is going on. So that could be problematic. Okay. I think I had... Are they all full? I guess we got them all. Okay, where is that damn storehouse? There it is. You can see the fire. Oh, there's some more buckets. Oh, I'm missing buckets. Go ahead and put those in. You kind of wonder, like, why is nobody else out here? <laughs> you know, somebody filled all these, put these buckets out, spaced them out, filled some of them. Maybe the drow got them. Yeah, that's probably what happened. There's another bucket. Buckets for days. Let's see, there's a rock. Now, could some rocks you can pick up, some you can't. Really, this you have to look at the map here and see where these orange dots are. That's how you know whether you can pick it up. Although there are some secret buttons and things. I don't know. It's just kind of a mess. <laughs> it's just kind of a mess. Okay, let's see if we can put this out. Did I fill those buckets? No, crap it. At least it's daylight now, it's easier to see. <laughs> yeah, that's how long it's taken us to get these buckets filled. <laughs> okay, empty buckets. Empty no more. I think there's one more bucket. Yes. Got the buckets. Got the, the fire out. Remember that World of Warcraft quest? It's like it's also the dwarves, right? In your little town outside of Iron Forge. It's like a quest where you gotta put fires out. <laughs> I'm just making that up. I'm pretty sure I remember that. Maybe that was inspired by this. <laughs> Kinda doubt it. Okay, now we can replace the empties with the fulls. At least you don't have to be like real precise with aiming these buckets. Wouldn't that be a pain? We are thwarting the plans of those evil drow. The Bucket Brigade. Okay. There's... I don't know if this counts. Is this one fire or two? Must be one. There we go, a couple more. Bucket on the fire. Now you always just see Conan doing this. <laughs> there, the fire is oot. 
Oh, this is me. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, there, the fire's up. Now we must find the captain of the goat. Bald or so. Bald Asser will need our help. Oh, bald ass. Uh, he's not bald, actually. He's got quite a nice claw. Uh, no I anything of that loyal <laughs> Who wrote this garbage? <laughs> No, I anything of that loyal man, tis this. Alive or dead, he'll be at his post, to the guardhouse. You know, somebody, remember that old comic like Prince Valiant? God, I don't know, where are they? I don't even know if it's, can you say this was inspired? <laughs> okay, look, there's a little thingy down there. Let's go ahead and get our uh, first NPC though, make it a little bit easier, a little bit safer. Okay. You know, the graphics, yeah, they're a little bit muddy. It's, you know, 1993 or 4, whatever this is. It's it's hard to see. You know, I, I was kind of debating. You know, Betrayal and Krondor, I think, looks a little better than this. <laughs> you know, wouldn't you say? And this is just it's really fuzzy. It's certainly nowhere nearly as uh, sharp as uh, Underworld and uh, you know, Elder Scrolls Arena. Daggerfall. You get up close enough though, the graphics look good. Like the sprite art is great. See what I mean? Look at this nice head of hair. It's kind of like Michael Landon. Let's go to the little house on the prairie next door. And we do have a few dialogue options. Sometimes you just click it, but. Sometimes it's kind of cool, you have a choice of like what character says what. I have no idea if it has any massive impact, or whether your choices matter. <laughs> it just gives you a little bit of role playing possibility. Yeah, here's this son of a Do not press this son of a gun, whatever you do, man. <laughs> the screen will just get all messed up and it won't ever fix. So just avoid that. I, I, what is that even doing there? I, the only thing I could figure is people might want to print out like lines of dialogue instead of, instead of taking notes. Which is actually a pretty cool idea because that was one of the pains back in the day. You know, you had to have your notepad out. You know, especially if you didn't have a clue book writing down all these uh, clues. So maybe with this you just print, print it out and have it to keep. Now why wouldn't they just have that in a journal somewhere? I guess they weren't smart enough. <laughs> maybe they didn't want to do it that way. They liked the paper method. I don't know. Uh, but it's an interesting... I haven't seen this in any other role-playing game. I've seen them be able to print out maps, but not dialogue. Uh, anyway, the fire is out, our friend bald ass. Uh, now let us rout these dark intruders. And if Drzzzt has arranged this evil night, let us end his days up about Icewind Dale forever. Yes, this was a drow rain, but I can also see Drizzt as this hard. No, not that one. Not him. So if you ever read the Drizzt books, you know... He's always getting blamed for things. A lot of he's he's basically a, a victim of prejudice. He's always having to prove himself or uh, you know just survive, and even though everybody's uh, not not willing to give him a chance, it's because he's a drop. It's, 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 it makes for good stories. A good sympathetic character. I, like I say, I love those books. Let's see, Baldus, our, our friend. Where are your men? Where are the villagers? The sounds of the struggle are fading quickly. Men are scared, scattered, confused, terrible. They're terrible men. Matt, our town has little wealth. Why would the drow make such an assault? Rahul, have faith, go bold, sir. This drow trusts that he should not go unchallenged. If your company is, I promise you this. The God will smell upon your courage. <laughs> uh, your talents are best used here. This is also Rahul. So basically, do you want to have a fighter in the party? Of course we do. Good weapons, he says. All right, so there's our first NPC. Now the thing about these NPCs, some of them come and go, some won't stay through, throughout the whole party, and you can only have four, and apparently you know, once you get Drizzt, he will come and go. <coughs> so I don't know how they will handle all that, but we can get, I think we can get rid of these buckets now. Let's see, how do you do, how do you get rid of them? 
<laughs> you're out of it. I think you just... Uh... Well, did that work? I can't tell. We're getting rid of the buckets. Oh, there we go. I don't think we'll need them again. But inventory space is going to be an issue. So I don't want to be carrying around 100 buckets. Man, this particular song just gets on my nerves. <laughs> I don't know, what is that? Okay, we have that. That. Oh, got another bucket. Okay, let's save. Now, he said there's some good weapons in the guardhouse. I wonder if that by good means... Uh... Let's see the guardhouse. So apparently there's some composite bow in here somewhere. Let's see. So we click on this again. And we should have some little orange dots for stuff we can pick up. It's a nice little song. And don't don't ever put barrels and crates in an RPG and not let you click on them and <laughs> break them. And don't ever do that. That's just mean. Okay, what is that? See what I mean? It's not really obvious what you can pick up. So I've got this leather armor. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pick everything up for now, and then later we'll do a detect magic and see if it's any of it's magical. Let's see the mace. Like I say, there's no place to sell stuff, so there's no real reason to be collecting items and there aren't weapons that won't work on monsters. You know, it's not like one of those games where the uh, you, know, you have to have a bludgeoning weapon for that type of mob and a pointy weapon for something else. That spear will probably come in handy. Okay. And according to the clue book there's a bow in here somewhere. No, I don't want to use a ranged weapon. But... Let's see, I don't see it. Oh, it looks like it's to the northwestern corner. Let's see what. Oh, there's a quiver. Okay. Yeah, to see inside the quiver, you gotta. Oh, that is hard to see. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so he's got a composite bow. You know, it's funny how that doesn't tell you how much damage it does. Okay, well, do we have the tech magic yet? I think I gotta go rest up. Let's go rest and see if any of this is magical, and if not, we'll just dump it. Remember, the innkeeper has some bauble he wished to give to us. Best not to leave without seeing what boon he might supply. Yeah, get this guy another thesaurus. He needs one. And another thing I learned is that only the... If it doesn't have an orange slash across it, you can't go in there. But you can see there's all sorts of stuff around us here. We could go see what's behind that well. I keep calling it well. I shouldn't do that because it's not. I don't, I don't know if there's any drow still running around here. Let's see. I think I'm about in the right. There. No, there's just more buckets. Yeah, you got enough buckets. You got enough buckets for you. <laughs> Man, I worked hard on that bucket. 
there's something there. Oh, another. Damn. They're just nothing but buckets. Oh, wait, that's not a bucket. What is that? A dagger. Okay. And I don't. It's like there's something north of us there. Something else over there. I try to remember where that is. Is this the end? No. Won't let me in there. I think the end is a little bit further north. Yeah, it's hard to see what you're doing sometimes. Okay, we're back at the inn. Talk to our friendly tavern keeper. You wouldn't be pulling one of your jokes on us this evil night, would you now, innkeeper? Earlier you said something about a reward for our efforts. Not that we need a reward, but... There, upon the table, I've secured for you a helmet. One endowed with a magic which may aid in your protection. When I saw it on my travels earlier this year, I thought to buy it at a great price and sell it for one greater still. But after all you have done for us, I hope only that it keeps you safe. Got a helmet. Well, we'll not forget this act of generosity. When next we return, the celebration must take a different course. Then you must watch as we buy food and drink enough for a hundred revelers and two nights of unending song. Goodbye, old friend, until we meet again. Goodbye, old friend, who we're only going to be calling Tavern Keeper. <laughs> Alright, Chain Helm. Maybe that's... Oh, that's a... Helm AC bonus too. Okay, I think we can rest now. Yep. Okay, now we should be able to cast our uh, Detect Magic. Okay, yeah, you can see. So that was a magical battle axe. Magical helmet. Anything else? Doesn't look like we have anything else magical here. Except for these scrolls, of course. So we might as well just start getting rid of stuff. There's nothing more to be done here. And we can't... Oops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, the throwing knife and the spear I'll keep. Get rid of this extra battle axe. More hammer. Mace. Extra shield. And I'm pretty sure this stuff will stay here. You know, if we ever want it, actually want it, we can come back here and pick it up later. I guess we're off to the plains now. We might we could see what this other stuff is, but I don't want to spend all day looking for it. So there's something else in the northwest corner. I think there's something there. Padded armor. AC bonus of two. So it looks like this, I don't know how much weight affects characters, but you know, maybe I don't, it seems to me if it gets the same AC bonus, you might as well have the lighter, lighter version of it. Okay, there's one other thing. Funny how we know that there's something out here, but we don't know what it is until we go to it. What was that? Is that another spear, maybe? This is not a magical spear. I wonder if, I wonder if you can throw a spear. A 
Is that another one? What is that? It's just a quarter staff. Eh, I might hold on to a quarter staff. Maybe I'll find a mage at some point. You only want the quarter staff. It kind of reminds me of a game called Aztec Challenge. Paul Norman. You guys probably know what I'm talking about. Really, really fun little action game. Okay, I think we're done here. Let's just go ahead and leave the town. See if we can find Drizzt. Figure out what happened to these villagers. Maybe even survive. Now, let's tell you, these uh, magical vestment spells are really cool. Let me show you that. So, you can see he's got, turn like this, AC. Matt's doing pretty good, AC zero. Remember, this is the AD&D system, so you want lower <laughs> AC. Uh, but Baldassar is very high. And Rahul's pretty high, so if we cast those magical vestment spells on him. I don't know how long it'll last. Hopefully long enough to use and come back. See, now his AC is 1 and 3, so quite a bit better. As far as I know, there's no time limit or anything, so we could just keep coming back and resting as much as we need to level up. See, one of the raiders has made a clumsy run through here. He must be wounded and will be easy to follow. Yes, after him to the south. So again, you have to watch those clues carefully. Otherwise, you will have no idea what to do. Oh. <laughs> what is this? Do you wish to talk or fight? I will try talking. Wait, wait, we have no wish to fight you. Do you understand? Rock and have kids, yes. That's how, always how it goes, isn't it? Just trying to be friendly. Oh, he went down quick. Okay. Check our map. Oh, there's something there to the in the corner. What is it? A crossbow! <laughs> okay. They randomly come across a crossbow. You know, I, I might show you these ranged weapons just so you can see what I'm talking about. How <laughs> That would be unbelievably crappy if you were trying to use that on all your characters. Let me just show you if I can get this up. I'll, I'll show you what, what tedium this would be. Let's put it on that guy. And the quiver. Okay, so. Did he? <laughs> well, that went a little too quick. I don't even think I fired an arrow. Anyway, I'll show you when we get to... Uh, Okay, there's the crossbow bolts. What is this? King Tom's ointment. Okay, I don't know what King Tom's ointment is. <laughs> well, go back. Oh, you got to click on the hand to close the bag. That's not a quiver, though, so I don't know how that's going to work. And quick save. I think this is our, yeah, this is our wounded drill. Trust no one more than yourself. They left me behind to die. Quickly then, finish me. <clears throat> you know, Isn't that a Klingon thing? <laughs> the drill in this based on Klingon. Maybe somebody was watching a little too much Trek. Trust my words, drill. Never shall you cower in the shadows of your homeland again unless you answer us now. So he says, finish me, and now we're going to threaten his life. Okay. 
Uh, why have the Dark Elves come to the surface? Where have you taken our townsfolk? The Bluth. The, the Bluth? <laughs> Here's why we come. That freak among drow must be returned to us. Hear me. His death will appease both the Spider Queen. Yes, I'm gonna go to the Luth. Face the Spider we Queen. All surface dwellers slaves. We shall make all surface dwellers slaves. I knew Drizzt was involved in this. Oh, come on, Rahul. Perhaps Vermilion can shed some light on his whereabouts as well. As for you, Dark Elf, slink home and give fair warning. We are coming. Oh, yes, we are coming to rescue those you took away this night. Be gone. Alright. Okay. Yeah, you see that arrow? <laughs> Okay, so what you have to do every time is click that, double click him, and that'll reload his bow. Every battle. <laughs> or you can just use a sword and not have to deal with that. So you, you tell me which is easier. Okay. Let me just keep on following this little southern wall. There's another fight. Stupid Noel! Oh, another one. Oh! Quite a few of these. This this music, the combat music, kind of reminds me a little bit of a JRPG, like a Final Fantasy, one of the early Final Fantasies, maybe, or like an 8-bit. Although it's I'm sure it must be using those uh, instruments on the sound card. Uh, what is this? <laughs> oh, Mage Scroll. So I don't think we need those. I don't have a mage. And this is a centaur. You know, I felt like I was playing a, a Hercules Legendary Journeys game when I first saw this guy. <laughs> you know, the centaurs in that show always look so weird. A talking horse. And I might ask for a ride, whether you're not an arrow pointed at my heart. <laughs> okay, Rahul, what in the world is your deal? <laughs> uh, what are you about this day? Yeah, why don't we say that? My nose brings me out. It smells a mixture of fools and evil. The evil is the evil of the dark elves and the fools. <laughs> Are you aware that you stand where the dark elves stood but a short time ago? My bow has sent more than a single shaft into the heart of evil this day. One of the drow sought to capture me, daring to think he might ride me into battle. Ha! Let anyone dare put a hand upon my back and he will lose more than the offending. You're a part horse. Uh. <laughs> Stay with us for a little while, I believe, is the gist of that. So this is why I kept the spear back. He's got armor. So he's got a pretty low AC. Need to 
again. You don't want to be messing with these stupid ranged weapons. Okay, I think that's... What is that? Oh, that was that scroll. So I guess just to keep us from coming back and hitting it over and over again, we can just put a little note there. <laughs> scroll. Okay. If there is something to the north... Be that thing. <laughs> that little blob. <laughs> Lock picks. You know, I don't think I've got a rogue in the party. Not sure who can use lockpicks. That looks like a fight. Oh, I guess you do throw spears. That's considered a ranged weapon, too. Let's see. I think I got a staff. Put the staff there. So uh, keep him from just slapping the enemies. Okay, have it. I gotta say, I'm doing better this playthrough than my previous one. These characters are doing a little, lot better. Could just be getting better rolls, but I think that magical vestment spell really helps. Uh, to the west. Oh, it's just my. Yeah, you know, do I even care about these spears? <laughs> okay, we can go north and check out Vermulian. He's quite a character. We can also rest here, I believe. Yes. I just want to cast another one of my uh, detect magic spells. Yeah, it looks like I don't have anything else magical. See, Rahul wants to say, by the favor of what god have the drow left you safe this day? Maltathar, what do you know about the dark elves? Or I could say the town council has been taken hostage by the drow along with many others. Can you help us? Help you? What could you want from such a weak old man as myself? If it's advice you seek, rise early, work hard, expect little in return, and always, uh, rather, never volunteer for anything. Take up the study of gemstones. gemstones. It's a relaxing pursuit, and it has served me well over the years. Now, go away. I have no more time to see you than I had for the drow, and they were better conversations. <laughs> yep. Drow? Drow? Oh, the dark elves. I have one around here somewhere, I think. Or did I send that fellow on his way? It's such a bother, he and his friends. All of them casting globes of darkness and shouting in the room. I'm a good house guest, no time to join in their games. If you're looking for them, I'm afraid I made them go away. Quite far away, actually. No, I, I don't think you should be seeing those few again. Are there more of them about? You know, I love the voice acting here. <laughs> you can tell whoever this was is having a good time. Let's see. Please, if we pursue the raiders blindly, we will only endanger those they have taken. Can you answer us with more than just an old man's jest? And blindly you shall pursue them. For their home is in the Underdark. Even creatures endowed with natural infravision may have some difficulty in that infinite labyrinth. And others stand no chance at all. You may prove as effective as a blind mole charging its course by the stars. Blind then there are the radiations the to contend with. And you expect an old man whose hobby is the study of precious stones to help you. Well, well there may be a way. You get it? He likes gemstones. Enchantment for gems. So few appreciate the proper uses of gems. So few. Ah, but I am not insensitive to your quest. 
If you were to bring me four gems, any type will do. I shall enchant them. First, so he who keeps gem. any such gem may see in the Underdark as well as any... Gem in the holograms. Second, to protect you against the radiations known to emanate from deep in the earth. I sell a few, now and again, but currently have no supply. In this case, you need only bring me the stones. I shall provide the enchantments without charge. Oh, but it would be nice if the developers had integrated a store and a purchasing option. <laughs> but they did not. <laughs> so... Only those long used to the Underdark share some resistance to the radiations. Dwarves who have... I wonder what happened. Do you think they just ran out of time? The Deep Gnomes and the Mykonids. Many just didn't think it was necessary. ...unaffected in those shadows. Those surface dwellers are most seriously... You know, it sort of cuts off the end of some of the dialogues for some reason. Okay, we're now, our in gems. all the world, should I know where you can find gems? I know only that my own supply is exhausted. Consider this: several caravans have been reported missing to the east. They often bring a variety of goods through the mountain passes, including, I'll wager, a precious stone or two. Yes, these gems might be in the hands of those who stole them. Uh, but then that is your problem. Okay, so we have our quest. Dark Elves? Ah, it's most unusual for any of the Dark Elves to be about. Of course, it is true that Driss roams these parts. But then again, he is most unusual, even among the drow. Yeah, we need to get Driss in a party. Himself. If you have questions about his cruel brethren, you'll do well to see him directly. Certainly. No greater authority on Menzo Barons than exists above ground. Menzo Barons. that dark world from which he came. Uh, do we still need to talk to him? He's just the same options. Okay. And there's a few items in here we can pick up, or at least consider. Somewhere. on the northern side. Aha, check this out. It's a scroll on a table. You know the manual, I had to laugh at that because the manual like is bragging on how, you know, in this game you there's objects lying on tables. <laughs> Remulian's parchment. So if we want to read this thing, we got to put it in this hand and then activate it like that. So this is a little bit of backstory, a little bit of lore, I suppose, about the Dark Elves. Who the Drow are. The Drow followed and forever took upon themselves the darkness of the shadows. A little bit of flavor text. So I don't... Oh. So it's just not true there's just no story in this game. I mean, I need to drag that with us though. I think that's about all we need for now. Go ahead and get those spells going again. Oh, I'll cast on the wrong guy. Oh well, I guess that means we'll be back. Aid on him, maybe. I'm trying to remember, does, does Bless just work on one person? Let's try it. Yeah, it's just one person. Maybe it's prayer that works on everybody. I'll take care of him. Is that? What is that thing? Bugbear. Get him down. Pick up the new wolf. Not dead yet. There's another one. Whoa! I <laughs> overshot him. How 
much easier this is and having to pick up all those arrows and spears and stones. Alright, let's see what we are... How far we are to the next level. So we need 16,000... 6,000... I don't know what kind of XP we're getting for these fights. Probably like a hundred a pop. If that. Ooh, what's that? Cleric scroll of cause light wounds. Crap, am I on a fight? <laughs> what's going on? We could try that scroll out, I guess. Sounds like I'm fighting something. I don't know what kind of damage that did. Probably not enough to justify carrying a scroll around. Alright, alright, alright. Well, it's something over in the northwest. Am I in the right? Nope. There's just a set number of these bad guys. Or do they randomly spawn? Taking them out pretty efficiently. Doesn't say whether I'm getting X how much XP I'm getting. It's kind of relaxing, though. It's like popping bubbles of a <laughs> sheet of bubble wrap. <laughs> wow, music changed. And so ends the life of that knoll. Oh man, I got way off course. And in the right. Somewhere over here. Oh. Is that it? No, that is not it. That's <laughs> to the north. You stupid bugbear, can't you see I'm trying to locate orange dots on a map? I think I see it. What's that? <laughs> a rock. <laughs> Yay! Alright, north western corner. Take this guy out. Western corner. Take this guy out. Western corner. Not your day. Okay, we should be right in the... We should be right ahead. Hmm, talk about a pixel hunt. Probably just a stupid... Yeah, stupid rocks. Ugh. Okay, well that was pointless. Whew. Feels like you're on a roller coaster. Uh, I want to say I thought there was like a cave or something here. Wait, what is that? What is that? Ooh, a halberd. It's probably better than a quarter staff. We dropped this new halberd on you. <laughs> How convenient. Five points of damage. I always like the halberd. 
Just like a cool weapon, you know? Good reach. There's something. What is that? <laughs> that is not. That is just a blur. It says there's an NPC due south. Who is this chucklehead? That's an NPC? Talk or fight? Hold where you are. We have no quarrel with the likes of you. We look only for villagers taken prisoner by the drought. <laughs> yes. Deep, deep dialogue. It's pathetic. Oh, what's going on? Oh, here's where it gets tough. Matter of fact, we could try a hold person. Fighting these Shreks. Like some, something you'd see on Shrek. You <laughs> like the green. <laughs> They, green blood, I guess. They didn't want to make it too gory. Oh, crap. There goes Matt. We'll have to reload. Yeah, once you cross over into these other, this other zone, it gets super, super tough. I never did figure out if there's... You know, how you raise the dead. I mean, usually that's... Usually it's not worth doing that. You know, I'll tell you what though. I need to get some more coffee anyway, so I can do some quick research to figure out about that dying problem. Be right back. Alright, so I did some research on that. And guess what? You're dead, you're dead. <laughs> uh, you know, you can always get a cleric with raised dead. Use that at some point. We're pretty good ways from being uh, the right level to use that. So, so here's what I'm thinking. Let's try to fight these guys again. Make sure i got my spells going. Magical vestments. Vestments. I think we're going to want a prayer <laughs> as well. Have that ready to go. There they are. Yeah, so that affects everybody. And I can also use a whole person spell. Uh, at least in theory I can do that. <laughs> Must have accidentally hit the wrong one. Whole person! There we go. Okay, one down. Hold that one. That's a pretty cool old person. I like that effect. That ring's pretty cool. I got one more. These guys are bad news if you come up unprepared. Oof. There, I think I got them all. What is that? A uh, warhammer. I wonder if that's a magical warhammer. Okay, obviously I'm going to have to go back now and rest up. <laughs> and it won't let you rest here. It just keeps saying, uh, monsters nearby, monsters nearby. Oh, I stand corrected. Okay. Okay, you know, last time it would not let me do that. Okay, it looks like it is night time, though. I wonder how... Somewhere here it must tell you what time of day it is. Well, let's get a light spell going. And we'll do our magical vestments again. One more... And let's do the detect magic just to make sure that no unfortunately that is not this he does two to five points of damage 
two to five. Yeah, this thing that's not. It's gonna be a crappy weapon. Just make a quick note here so I don't keep coming back to that, thinking it's a something cool. Okay, we need to go, I believe, to the. Actually, do we know where to go? There's an NPC to the south, looks like. Let's go that way. Maybe we could find Drizzit. Uh-oh. I thought I heard something. <laughs> okay. It's kind of scary. Oh, I'm too far to the... What happened? Oh, I ended up... I went too far to the west, okay. Okay, so this NPC is to the south. That must... Is that the NPC? Oh, great one. Our trouble is not with you. We seek a path beneath the earth to follow the draw who raided our village. Guys, very stealthy. Okay. So I guess sometimes it pays to talk. So he said the draw was down in here somewhere. Oh, this guy does not want to talk. Come on, we got him. As long as you can kill them before they hit you. <laughs> and what the heck is this ointment? Oh yeah, look, there's still a long ways from leveling. It's gonna be quite a while. There's another one. You know, I am glad they put the quick save there. I mean, it's just literally just instant, instant load, instant save. That's nice. Pick up a ring of featherfall. Okay, that's pretty neat. Remember Fizbin? Oh, ring mail. Okay. Ring mail. AC bonus three. Let's try that ring mail on him. Yeah, it's not going to work too well since he's got the uh, bonus three, bonus two. Yeah, maybe I'll put it on my cleric instead. Sorry. That should give him a little bit better AC. Okay, that was a good find. Ring mail. You know, you don't hear too much about ring mail. Underrated. Underrepresented. However, I did not see any drow in here. Is there some secret? Hmm. I might want to check the clue book to see if I'm missing something there. Mr. Clue Book. And no. However, we are on the right track. Check out this map. Man, I'm glad they got this map. <laughs> I don't even want to think about playing this without an auto map. There's another one of those guys. Let's get our hold person spell ready. Aha. All right. I think 
It said Drizzit was back in here somewhere. What is this? Wow! <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Badass himself. sure that was in the novel one of the novels that incident he's talking about Yeah, I, I think we're going to want him in the party. What, what do you think? Your trust in me speaks well of you. I shall take care not to break it. Together we may yet free the villagers. Something we could not hope to do working on. Flattering. You'll need to drop one of your party members. I guess it's going to be Mr. Centaur. Okay, so we could pick him up again. If you wish to look for me again, return to our first meeting place, where I shall be watching the Drow Trail. You know, the only sucky thing is I think he... Oh no, he even left a songbird here. Excellent. That was thoughtful of him. And just in case you wanted to put his weapons on somebody else. That's a nice touch, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that. <laughs> okay, look at... Drizzle here, negative three AC. He's only got a 13 strength, but he's got a 20 dex, 15 con. What's this? A green robe. He's got his Guinevere. Guinevere. A couple of spears. He's got magical icing death and Twinkie. <laughs> Twinkie and icing. No, it's Twinkle. I don't think he's got a helmet on, but maybe he doesn't need one. I don't think I have an extra one anyway. So let's see, he is a ranger. So now we got a fighter. Well, oh, he's level 15. Okay, we need to figure out how to reorder this party. I'm going to want him in the front rank. How do we move our party around? Hmm. Can't drag it over. Is that? There we go. Look at that. Okay, that'll probably work out pretty well. Excellent. Okay. Now we're cooking with gas. Don't worry, what is... Didn't really tell me what I need to do now. Why am I not moving? <laughs> okay. 
kind of ex I can't wait to put Drizzit to the test here. Well, I don't want to leave the area yet. Come on. We got to find those gems for our uh, Vermilion. Oh, we're so proud of these rock textures. Okay. A little something to the north of us. There we go. Let's see how this works. See what kind of damage Drizzit does. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> He's doing some nice damage. Yeah, this game just got a whole lot easier. Ooh, and a potion of giant strength. You know, this might be good for Drizzit since he's got that low strength. Okay. Creature. Yep, that is a creature. Oh, well, this guy ever <laughs> I'm gonna have a bad day. <laughs> Lawn more cutting down grass. Okay, looks like there's something there to the south we could check out. I know where we're going to, by the way, eventually. <laughs> I'm trying to put it off because, <laughs> oh, it's a bad place. Ooh. A broadsword. I wonder if that broadsword is better than the longsword. Alright, he's got Detect Magic going still, so it's not a magical broadsword. Let's see, 2 to 8, 2 to 7. I never know what that second number is for. Is it? I guess maybe if you put it in your offhand. Okay, so it does 2 to 8 points of damage. So I guess it is a little better than a longsword. Since ex you at least get 2 points of damage with it. Alright, we'll operate under that assumption. You know, I'm kind of tempted now that we've got all these fighters. Maybe we can get rid of one of these shields. I thought that was a one-headed weapon. I didn't even know a cleric could use a hal halberd. <laughs> what? Is that legal to use that? No. Didn't think so. However, we could give it to Baldazar. So we'll need to... Actually, maybe if we take the shield away. <laughs> Put his clothes back on, though. Let's just see. Yeah, so he cannot use that. But the fighter should be able to use it. Okay, so kind of interesting choice. We could have him with an AC4. It looks like it's... Man, a halberd is a two-handed weapon, is it not? Am I completely out of my mind? I could have sworn that was a two-handed... Just looking at the clue book quick... Or the uh, instructions. Let's see. These two-handed weapons must be used from the primary hand. Note that items in the other hand are unavailable. Hmm. So I guess it lets me hold it, but it's not going to actually use that shield. Or do I get the AC bonus? No. So if I put shield on... Yeah, you see what it does? Let me just try this for a while. I can always go back. That shield doesn't look as good as that shield, but I guess they're all the same. Okay. Let's go find some trouble. Tr 
trouble. You know when you actually want to fight one of those things, of course they're <laughs> nowhere to be found. Oh, let's let's go southeast. Get into this little nook. There we go. Let's try that. Harbored out on him. A little bit easier now. Okay, what? Do, uh oh, I hear that hi hat. Don't see an enemy though. <laughs> that was weird. Oh, we got another sack. Coin. Potion of fire resistance. Potion of healing. Okay. I wonder why we have coins. I'm pretty sure there's no place to actually buy anything. I hope I'm not wrong about that. Maybe those coins are a quest item of some sort. Let's see, does it say anything about the coins? No, just a coin. Somebody must want coins. Must be for a quest eventually. Uh, it says there's a mob. There he is. Come here, you beautiful. Whatever this thing is. <laughs> Giant Shrek looking guy. I'll do it. Cure Matt up a little bit. Rahul, thank you, Rahul. You know, Rahul's doing a good job. Alright. You know, it's starting, this game is starting to grow on me. This is fun. It's, it was really punishing before, but I think with Drizzt in the party, I can just focus on exploring and trying to find those gems. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the cave we need, but let's just... Uh, I want to see what these treasures are up here. Oh man, those things hit you. They hit hard. Wow, that was a lot of damage. Yeah, I don't. We're gonna have to go all the way back and rest up before we go any further. Cleric good scroll of protection from evil. And a cleric scroll to detect magic. That's nice. Mage scroll we don't need because we actually can. Is Drizzt as a ranger? Is he able to use those? Immunity to adherence. The heck is that? Did you ever get stuck on things? Let's just see if he can do it. No, I don't. I don't think he can use that either, so that's kind of a useless spell. Alright, I'm almost dead here, so... Definitely need to go back and rest up before I try to go inside that cave. But let's take care of this guy first. I do have another whole person. Oh, you can do it from range. Uh oh. This could get nice if he decides to start slugging Matt. Oh, don't kill him. Whew. That was close. I'm thinking we want to go back and rest. Uh, that's just a null. Should be able to take this out. Yeah, you got. You can attack from further off than you would think. Let's see, right there. So, yeah, you can. If you see them, you can get some good. Pretty much kill them before they get close to you. Now with that mindset. 
Take that out. Uh oh. Sometimes I get the drop on you, though. That's a lot of combat. Now, are these guys anywhere closer to leveling? 2 5. Not too far. Probably if I did this another couple hours, he would level, but, uh, you know. Let's just go rest up and we'll see if we can get those gems and. I would like to get to the Underdark before we adjourn today. But I will be satisfied if we can get to the gems. Wasn't able to do it on my other party. Alright, rest up. You know, that's a nice little thing, too. She just automatically... I don't even know why it asks you that. <laughs> would you like to heal? No, I would like to just keep going wounded. Uh, but it is nice to have that, because if you remember in the gold box games, you had to laboriously cure light wounds, cure light wounds, cure light rest, memorize. It was very tedious. They fixed that pretty early. What the hell is that? Uh, they did fix that in some of the... In the later games. Alright, just while I'm thinking about it. Whoa, his AC is awful. Does he not even have armor? Why is his AC so terrible? Oh, that is awful AC. Needless to say, he needs those that spell. But I'll wait till I get to the hard area. Okay, let's go ahead and put that spell on him before he keels over. Okay, so now his AC is four. Wow, Driz is negative three. You know, I could cast another one on. Uh, Rahul, but since they're in the back, I think they're okay. Let's see, is there anything else I need to do? I could kind of explore along this northern side. Oh, there we go. Look upon the floor. The, look, there upon the floor, our slain foe has dropped something which may prove of use to us. Okay. So just suddenly now they're dropping loot. All right. I feel like I'm in some kind of like 80s kung fu, California kung fu movie. All right, said he dropped something. Where is it? You know, one thing I wish you could do is look down. <laughs> A key ring. I assume that's just what it sounds like. Place to put keys. Alright, I guess... Thank you for that. No. Another scroll just lying around the ground. Flame blade. I'm gonna use flame blade. Oops, give it to the wrong guy. You might as well use it instead of just leave it lying there. Oh, I didn't mean to put it there, though. <laughs> oh, well. Guess now he is dual armed. Doing good, I think. Hey, what's this? A shield. Just a regular old shield. Let's do another detect magic. Uh, no, just a regular old shield. Don't need that. Okay. Yeah, I guess I can't swap.
like this little ditty that's playing. Yeah, here we go. I think this is where Drizzit was staying. I see how hard it is to see in here. Yeah, why is this grayed out? It's looking like I can't even... Yeah, I don't like the look of that. Something's not right here. Oh, can I get rid of that spell? <laughs> I think I kind of messed myself up with that. Okay, these caves are pretty painful to get around in, I have to say. Looks like it's an intestinal tract. Okay, don't see any of those. There's something there. Pawafi cloak. I think I'll need that for a disguise later. Or maybe it's just letting me know that there was a drow that stayed in here, because that's a, a drow cloak. And I have to keep my eye open for... secret buttons and such. Uh, just an empty sack. Those empty sacks would be handy. See, I'm just looking everywhere for little secret buttons. I want to keep checking my map too for loot. Ah, uh, you see it? Kind of hard to see, but I spotted it. Stalactites, because they're on the top, and they come down. Stalactite has a T in it. Stalagmite has a G in it. Same as ground, so you know that comes from the ground. Here, let's have Drizzit read his own text. No drow word for love. How can the idea survive when the language holds it silent? Goodness, too, is not something for a drow to ponder. Am I weak for thinking of goodness and love? Or is that my strength? A strength which separates me from all other drow. Station and power... No, that's weakness. <laughs> ...gained through acts of virtue and deceit. There is no rank a drow might achieve, but that he must always watch his back. Compassion has no place in men's affairs. See, this, the game is really starting to pick up at this point for me. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling like the story's coming together. I really enjoy the voice acting. The, even the writing has improved. I mean, that was... That was way better than that stilted dialogue at the beginning. You know, Drow... I mean, Drizzit just makes everything better. <laughs> I think that's just what it comes down to. Oh. That a scimitar as one day surely it's not going to be better than I don't know is it is there anything special about it Is there anything else I need to do in here? That stalactite is blocking my way. Oh, 
Aha. Pretty sure that's just the way I came, but... Why can't I move? That was weird. I think I've explored this whole cave, huh? Yeah. Just glance at the clue book here to make sure we're not leaving something behind. We've got the sack, we've got the parchment, we've got the scimitar. Yeah, we're good to go. Assuming. You know, when did he have time to set up a whole secret area? That's what I want. Okay. Making some good time here, too. It says there's an in, a creature. I guess that means a fight. Uh, Noel. Silly Noel. No. Man. This just almost doesn't seem fair. Uh, where is it? Huh. Okay, I think we need to... I keep hearing fighting... Oh, there he is. I have to say, I keep hearing this fighting music. And it does look like that's working. That's cool. This flame weapon. Flaming blade, I think they called that. You know, every fantasy story, eventually somebody shows up with a flaming blade. Just one of those tropes that will never die. Okay, now... <laughs> Having to know this place is pretty hard. Matter of fact, already here. I'm gonna spell ready. I don't know if we can be if we'll be able to hold these things or not. Oh, I can hear, but I can't see. I don't like that situation. There it is. No, did not work. These things literally kick like a mule. I think I might have enough firepower with Drizzt though to make short work of it. Lucrata. Ah, oh, got it. Yeah, that's a little bit easier with Drizzt than without him, man. I think that was my big mistake before trying to do this without Drizzt in the party. Uh-oh. Okay. Looks like my uh, Flaming Blade spell wore off. That's okay. Let's see, do I still have my magical vestments? Yes. All right. So yeah, with this auto mapper, it's kind of nice that this shows you the items in orange, because otherwise, you know, with the muddiness of the graphics, you just wouldn't be able to see. So it's a good way to address that situation. All right, I don't see anything there. Looks like we need to go south. Let's see, potion, potion of jump. 
Oh yes. This is the thing that I found annoying. Let's see what's around this corner. What? There must be a way for us to reach that opening above. Hmm, perhaps we should try the potion we found earlier in these caverns. See, this is, it doesn't give you any, like, insight as to, as to how to use this potion or, or what the hell. Let's see, before we go up there, I want to explore this little area. I don't know if there's just a set number of those Lucretias in the dungeon or not, but... I don't want to be surprised by one if I can help it. It's enough to make you feel claustrophobic in here. I'm not saying anything. Just the stalag might. But it goes on. And there's something over here. I'm supposed to be looking for gems. And just another shield. Kind of creepy. Take magic wars off. There's another potion. Another potion of jump. Jump. Might as well jump. Hope it plays that song when I use it. I could use a little Van Halen right about now. Okay, it looks like there might be. Okay, there's... What? Still got some stuff to explore to the east. Yeah. Now I wonder if that... If it, the orange blips show up automatically. Or do I have to like have to be in my line of sight first to pop up on the map? So I know I have to find some gems. Yeah, that's some bones. Water puddle. That looks like that might be another mob. Yeah. Wants to talk. Okay. We seek no trouble. If this is your lair, we will so soon leave. You the caravans I have destroyed? Gems and treasures. Gems. Touch them not. We shall soon leave, yes. But not to fly. Uh, and we fight. Hopefully I can kill this thing before it does too much damage to me. Ah, easy peasy. Did do 14 points of damage to Drizzt there. Oh. I thought I heard something. Oh crap, another one. It's a pretty badass looking monster. Okay. That'll get the blood pumping. Another potion. Get a lot of healing potions. That's always good. Oh, 
is that? Ring of Protection. Okay, who should I give that to? AC3, AC2, Oh, that's a good find. Uh, Mage Scroll of Burning Hands, I don't need that. Well, it was well worth this little bit of exploration just to find that ring. Every point of AC in a game like this is literally the difference in life and death sometimes. Okay, now we can try to figure out this jumping crap Oof. Yep. looks like there's some more to explore down here Let's just check this out quick yeah I've already been here maybe a little bit is that all? Yeah, I guess so. All right, where is the the jumping place? No, I think it's to the south. Yeah, I think that's the shield. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let me save it here. So I, uh, you know, it just took me forever to figure out how to do this, but I guess you just take this jump potion. Okay. And I suppose it's active on him now. I don't see any like indication that it's working but like there's no like how do you get up there I don't know I just found that if you just hold the button down he eventually pops up okay so I think that's where it came from and then they you know put you here where it's hard to get past that whoa <laughs> Oh, clunky, clunky, clunky. Helm of Disguise. What's that about? Seems like a quest item. Okay. So there must be a few other... There's another little thing I need to get up to. No, it's not letting me get up there. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Got to get a run. I need to take another jump potion. Okay, I can't get up there for whatever reason. It would be a lot better if they had a... I guess I've got to go that way. Yeah. Menzo Baranzen. Well, crying out loud, how do I get up there? Didn't I jump up anyway? Man, I think I'm... I think I'm stuck here. I don't see... This has to be it. There we go. Just randomly jumped. Okay, come on, move. <laughs> Please move. <laughs> 
I swear they should just... Why not just have a jump icon or something? I'm kind of wedged in between. The, there we go. Ugh. That's probably my biggest gripe about that game is just that little sequence there. And apparently levitation's a big part of this game. Hopefully it gets easier. Okay. I should be getting pretty close to these gems. Here, gem, gem, gem. Where is a gem? I hope it's on a table. Well, nothing over here. search continues. Oh, another jump. Oh! That is crazy. Save. <laughs> okay. Still no gems. I feel like we should have found some gems by now. Huh, okay. Let's try around this corner. Look at these gems. I might have to go look at the clue book again. Yeah, not having any luck. Let's see. I think I. Seven gems. Oh yeah, there's a lot to this I haven't explored. Use potion. Shield. Two potions of healing. So it looks like all the stuff I need is in the top right. Somewhere in there i got to get to. Okay. I'm thinking when we find these gems, that might be a... Well, get the gems, turn them in. I think that'll be a good stuff point. <laughs> it's taking a little bit longer than I thought. I wanted to get to the Underdark, see what that looked like. Oh, yeah. I went totally in the wrong side of this thing. Ah, like a maze. Right, north a little bit. And uh, somewhere in here, it's another spot for a jump. Might be further to the to the east. Is 
that. No. Good lord, man. Get this thing well hidden. to be here somewhere. What? Huh. Okay. I'm going to have to look at this clue book. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you need a GPS to find this damn thing. Uh, the crowd is there. Six A, so it's like right it should. It looks like I'm right there where I need to be. Is there like a secret opening? A little button somewhere I missed. You know, this is with a clue book, it's this hard. I mean, try to imagine. Not having a clue. Okay, I think. I think it must be, yeah, that looks right, okay. Is that two separate passages? Let's see. Okay, we wanna really look carefully. Damn it. And ring protection, yeah. Six. Five. Yeah, this is insanely hard. Okay. I think I did miss one of those jumping spots. Yeah, look north of here, maybe. Okay, I think this must be it. Yeah. Yeah, here we go, here we go. And there's one. Yay, one gem. I think we need, how many do we need? Four, okay. And we got one. And the other one. This is like looking for a proverbial needle in the haystack. Looks like there might be. There's another one. Excellent. Two. Halfway there. Let's see. Probably want to go north first. I think I see another one. Yep. Three. Oh my god, one more. One more gem. Hmm. 
Take another jump pushing or well, maybe we do have to take another potion. I'll go ahead and save it again. Okay, we should be jumping like crazy. There we go. it is. Boom. There's all four gems. And there it is. Boom. There's all. Now we just need to get out of here. Remember how to get out of here. Oh boy, oh boy, look at that. Looks like west. Yeah, we gotta go all the way to the western side to get out of here. And that is a dead end. Anything in that little area? Don't think so. All right, should be a pretty much straight shot from here. Yeah, then we'll go turn this in and we'll call it a day. Wait a minute, do I have to jump through there? so and I just do not like that jumping so-called jumping mechanic they could shove that <laughs> now I'm like jumping all over the place come on get through there so counterintuitive doesn't feel good you know All right, the exit should be around here somewhere. Yay, we're out of there. <laughs> I can breathe again. All right, let's go get these gems turned in. You know, the problem with this game before, I didn't have Drizzled in the party. I was trying to do with that, that layer with the centaur. And this was not happening. Okay. You better give me a good reward for all this. Aye, it's a pleasure to see such gems. Very fine. Remarkable. I never expected this. Did you know? One of them is a stone of winter. Cool. It is of elven origin. Whoever possesses it may cast a cone of gold as might an Cone of gold. Visit, though the effect is available only once per day. Yes, anything you wish to know about gems, don't hesitate to seek out old Vermillion. I shall enchant these gems for you now. you may see in the underdark as well as any of its natural depths hmm. 
As may any who carry but one such gem. They shall serve you well, especially where no torch or light spell exists to brighten your way. <laughs> If you are headed to the Underdark, know this. From dwarven miners of gems, I have heard of a fountain. It is of a rare and magical sort. One well capable of healing various wounds and diseases. It may lie along your path. I know not, but it is one last bit of knowledge I might pass your way. I also have a scroll or two which may be of use. Yeah, I think we might have looked at those scrolls already. And you are welcome to them. Well, there we go. Got our gems. Gem of Infravision. Oh, you just have it in your inventory? It's... How does it work? It looks like our fighter's leveled. Level 6. Anyway, there you go, folks. I think that's enough for you to make up your mind about whether this, this game is for you or not. Uh, I'm really having a good time with it. It's certainly got some uh, clunky aspects. You know, the jump spell, not my favorite. But, you know. Why is that dark? <laughs> you can't use the mace all of a sudden? What's going on? Uh, why is my mace dark? You get broken? Mace? No, oh, I guess it's it stuck. What in the world? Okay, I gotta figure this out. <laughs> your mace. Oh, it just doesn't want to. Doesn't seem to be readying anymore. All right. What about no weapons? I don't know. There seems to be a little bit of a glitch. Maybe it's just a graphical glitch. But anyway, uh, all glitches aside, <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to have to before we cut this video. I just want to make sure that that's... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's working. Uh, you know, is it a... <sighs> is it a game I would necessarily want to play all the way through to completion? You know, I will say this, now that I've gotten the gems and everything, I'm anxious to see the, uh, anxious and eager, actually, to see this Underdark. Uh, so it's got that going for it. Um, you know, I don't think this game is quite as polished as, say, a Betrayal of Crondor, or a, uh, you know, what would I compare it to? It's, you know, I, I think it'd be, had probably have more fun with Daggerfall, <laughs> frankly, or Ultima Underworld in this game. Uh, however, it is, uh, you know, it's clearly a game of this era. And if you like, you know, this style, this aesthetic, it'd be one more game that you'd want to play. Uh, I don't see anything that's so bad about it that I would say I, I don't want to play it. You know, nothing like that. It's just really, to me, it feels more than anything. You know, I think more than anything, it just feels like they didn't have quite enough time to really add some things that would have pushed it to that next level. I mean, not having a store is kind of a big deal like that. Uh, the inventory system, you know, it takes a little getting used to. It's pretty basic, but, you know, it, it works. Uh, the graphics are pretty muddy, as you can see, but again, uh, a lot of games from this era have the same problem. It probably would be considered even bad graphics for the time. Uh, certainly not cutting edge stuff. Uh, the story, you know, a lot of people banged the story. They didn't like the story, you know, yada, yada. Uh, 
you know, it's fine. You know, the, the drow have kidnapped the villagers. You're trying to rescue them, right? And there's a there's a helmet, magical helmet that comes up later, and that forms a bigger part of a quest. I don't really have any issues with the story. Uh, the dialogue, especially at those beginning sequences, though, horrible. I don't know if they were trying to be cute with that or what. That was kind of hard to read. <laughs> it was so bad, but it got better. And I think once Druzit comes on to the, into the game, uh, it improves tremendously. And I will say this, a lot of folks over the years have written in about this game to me and said I should play it, that they enjoyed it. So, you know, clearly there's something here. Uh, and as I said, I like the parts that I played here in this video. So I would recommend it. Uh, basically what I would recommend it to are people that like... If you love games from this era, you've played the Elder Scrolls to death, you've played uh, the Eye of the Beholder series, you've played... Uh, Oh, what else? Betrayal of Krondor. You know, if you played all of those sort of hits and you're like looking for something just to have something new to play that you haven't played before and you haven't played Menzo Baranzen, <laughs> you know, with all those caveats in place, go for it. You'll have a great time. And it's only like three bucks, you know, when you factor in the, you know, two for six dollars or whatever on, on GOG. So, you know, I think it'd be worth playing. Uh, I will say this too, especially if you like Ari Salvatore or Drizzt. I'm trying to think of this, but I don't know how many other games there might be with him as a playable character. You know, I don't have to think about that, but you know, if you love those books as much as I do, that's a pretty solid reason to play. Uh, but I'll just leave it there. You know, it's not, not a game I would put on my top 10 list by any means. <laughs> you know, maybe top 100 list. <laughs> you know, might be on there somewhere. Uh, but not really at the top. You know, I just, I just feel like it's a game that needs more polish, a little bit more uh, attention to detail. And they probably just ran out of time or money or, or who knows. But, but anyway, we'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, Menzo Veranza, uh, a decent game. Uh, worth checking out. I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> Go get it if you want to and have fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. That's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Man, oh man, I finally got my grades submitted uh, for this semester. I am just happy. It's a huge, huge relief to be done. I mean, it's been quite uh, a heavy load. Uh, but the good news for you guys is hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully, I just, I just will have more time at last to finally get Matt Chet back on track. Going to start trying to line up some guests here pretty soon. Get basically get everything uh, rolling again, and uh, hopefully, I don't know what life is like for you right now, but hopefully things are on the on the mend. Things are getting better. Uh, back to work and so on and so forth. So please, uh, if you find yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, send it my way. Support Matt Chat. Become a patron of the show. A retron. Join those hallowed legions. <laughs> of dirty old rats just like yourself that, you know, like Matt Chat and want the show to continue. Uh, don't ask much, you know, buck a show. If you like uh, what you saw here, uh, go uh, put a dollar in the cup. You can do that courtesy of Patreon. And there will be links for that in the show notes. Hey, don't wait. Go do that now. I think you'll really, <laughs> you get a lot more out of the show if you support it, folks. It's your show, you know. You know take ownership, claim your place. Uh, let's see. Uh, what about that news for the Mac? All right, got a few items here. Uh, one is a game called The Hand of Merlin. This is in early access. Looked interesting to me. It's a Turn-based roguelite RPG in which Arthurian legend meets with sci-fi horror. It's a little bit of genre confusion, if you will, genre blending. Uh, recruit mortal heroes to explore lands rife with otherworldly evil, make narrative bending choices and unique interactive encounters, and search for the lost fragments of your soul. Uh, that's $19.99, developed by a team called Romsey and Crow Team. Anyway, it looks really interesting to me. I'll be keeping an eye on that. Uh, next item, a little bit more controversial, I suppose. There's some... Uh, uh, just let me just say what it is. Uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. 
uh, this is they taken the Mass Effect series one, three, one, two, and three, and uh, the over 40 DLC apparently wrapped all this up into a big package, remastered and optimized for 4K Ultra HD. Now, as you probably know, I'm a huge fan of this series, played them all. I even liked Andromeda, which a lot of people hated. <laughs> you know, we'll get into that. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm having um, some fun with this Legendary Edition so far. You know, it's been long enough since I played the first game, for example. It's, it's kind of new again, uh, which is always, uh, you know, fun. Uh, the criticisms of it, you know, some people are criticizing, saying it's just kind of a cash grab and they didn't do enough work to, uh, I guess, sort of unify the experience and bring these games together and uh, so on and so forth. It's kind of hard to tell what's just like nitpicky or like grudge uh, reviews from like legitimate uh, spot on criticism. So I haven't personally, I haven't played it enough. I've only been in there for about an hour or two. <laughs> so I don't have an opinion yet on it, but it is, you know, 70 bucks. Uh, so folks, if you've got it, you got opinions, knowledge about it, you want to share that in the, uh, you know, in the, in the comments, please do that. You know, help people not <laughs> save their money <laughs> or perhaps jump in if you think it's worth uh, 60 bucks or should you wait for a sale? You know, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, and then finally, Matt wrote in about this. Uh, Black Isle Studios is doing a... Well, you probably heard about Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. A classic, a sort of action RPG back in the day. It's really popular with uh, for co-op. You know, I talked to a lot of guys who played this with their girlfriends or wives. Uh, you know, I could see uh, parents and kids playing it together. You know, it's, it's just a fun sort of co-op experience, not too heavy uh, of a game. Um, but it's been out it's coming uh they're re-releasing it for let's see xbox switch and playstation but they have announced that they're also doing a pc version uh, which is really exciting for years truly i've never actually gotten to play this <laughs> you know just never been a big console guy uh, i do most like 99 percent of 99.9 percent .9 of my gaming on pc so i will be looking for this they haven't released the date or when they might come out with this thing but Baldur's gate dark alliance will be out on the pc apparently soon <laughs> so if you got more information please share it but uh, i'll just try to keep my eye on that all right what about that ale of the week well let me tell you uh, about this brew um so what i've done i got some uh, uh what, what's the name of it um dark i want to say dark yeah bryce dark malt action extract so i got nine pounds of that uh, it's a syrup you basically use to make your wort with. And then I bought these uh, Northern Brewer Mighty Axe hops. So these are just little packages of hops. They're made right here in Minnesota in various styles. And to make this beer that I'm going to show you here in a minute, I used all, exclusively those Minnesota grown hops. And I'll tell you what types I used. I got it written down over here. <laughs> You, know, you almost have to be like a scientist when you're doing this. You have to keep careful notes. So you know what works and what you might want to tweak. Uh, but I used those uh, grains from last time. I didn't write down the name of those here, but <laughs> anyway. uh, uh, I, the hops is what's important, I think. I used a Tropica for bittering out of this uh, package here. Julius a little bit later for flavor and aroma. Uh, Tropica, another Tropica at the end of the process. And then I dry hopped with a Sterling. Uh, right at the end, you get five days with that. And as I said, I got it all kegged up. So let's uh, move over into the uh, kegerator room, if you will, and see what this is all about. All right, so here we go. This is what it looks like. You know, it's, it's set up there for a while, so some of the, the head has gone down. But it's actually got quite a nice head uh, coming out of that keg. And here's one I poured a little bit more recently, so you can, you can see. <laughs> you know, it takes some time to go in there and get it and, and come around. Uh, but anyway... Let's pour this into the drinking horn and see what it's all about. It's obviously quite a dark color and it smells really uh, sort of coffee, chocolatey. You know, there's no uh, sort of bad fumes coming off of this whatsoever. It actually smells, it smells quite good, but let's give it a taste. Now, I don't even know what I'm going to call this thing. You know, I guess I could give it a name. <laughs> Maybe Black Rat L. <laughs> Oh, man, that is really good. I, I think that the, uh, uh, you know, it's a little bit bitter. You know, it's maybe just a little bit bitter than I would normally like, but it's got a kind of sweetness that follows that. Uh, again, it's very, 
I don't want to say it's too much of a coffee. It's a little bit of a coffee flavor, uh, but you really just taste the, uh, uh, you know, how would I describe this? Kind of like a Guinness, maybe, like a like an oatmeal stout. If you've had those, kind of a, a little bit sweet, a little bit bitter, uh, really nice and, and creamy, though. I'll give it another taste here. Yeah, it's got a great, a great body. I really, yeah, you know, enjoy this. I'm kind of, again, okay. <laughs> You know, I don't want to give my own ales like you know five out of five drinking horns and you know pretend like it's the best ale ever because uh, there's undoubtedly a little bit of that uh, you know pride I guess and since you like made the beer <laughs> it's a little bit of a of a pride factor there skewing the results a little bit I'll try it one more time though hmm. you know I wish you guys were here so you could try this I'd be <laughs> happy to share this <laughs> you have a whole uh, you know, five-gallon uh, keg uh, full of this stuff. And I just have to say, overall, I've I'm, I'm just been really impressed with how easy it was. You know, maybe it was just beginner's luck. I don't know. Uh, just be able to get this, get these ingredients, you know, do, run through the process and, you know, wait a few weeks and you got a beer that's just as good, you know, if not better than the stuff you buy at the store. I mean, it's, it's pretty, uh, been pretty amazing. <laughs> you know, I really expected with this to... You know, I have to take several bad batches and like slowly figure out like how to make a decent, uh, you know, keg of ale. Uh, when the reality is, you know, as long as you can follow the instructions and, you know, I made plenty of mistakes along the way and it still turned out, you know, really good. Uh, so I'm really pleased with this uh, way this hobby's turning out so far. Uh, and if you want to uh, get these hops, make this yourself. You know, I have been using a Northern Brewer. Uh, they're also here in Minnesota, but they, you know, of course, have a website where you can buy this stuff. And this was just, you know, a big pack of these. Uh, uh, it's kind of a, a variety pack, sampler pack of these hops from Minnesota. Uh, so you can get those. And, you know, so I think it's maybe 40 bucks for that big old box. You know, it's plenty. <laughs> it's enough hops for a long time. <laughs> and you can uh, even just open them up, smell them, see what, see what you like. And if you don't like it, uh, you don't have to use it, right? But anyway... <laughs> I'm going to give it one more taste. <laughs> uh, yeah, just uh, really having a, some phenomenal luck with this. All right, but anyway, let's wrap it up with a quotation. And I was looking for quotes by R.A. Salvatore. Actually, I forgot something else. I got one more thing to show you here. <laughs> so as you may know, I am a big fan of the Weekly World News. Kind of the original uh, funny newspaper. They used to sell them in grocery, or grocery stores and Walmarts. You'd be checking out. Uh, and there on the, you know, like where the candy and stuff is, where the magazines are, there'd be these weekly world news, little funny newspapers about aliens and, you know, various uh, sort of wacky conspiracy theories. You know, it's just fun stuff. You know, it's not like, <laughs> you know, serious stuff. But uh, they went out of print for a long time, which made me really sad. But they had a Kickstarter a while back, and they... I uh, finally got around to sending me the, uh, I guess they're a little, I'm not even actually quite sure what this is. If this is a Weekly World News newspaper or just a collectible thing, we'll see. Let's see. Truth in Journalism is back. We're thrilled to send you the enclosed special edition of Weekly World News Greatest Covers. Uh, the WWN brand has been thriving digitally for years and our fans have been asking for a print edition, so we answered their calls. This is the first time we've been able to print a tabloid issue in 15 years? Really, has it been that long? <laughs> wow, I had no idea it had been 15 years. It didn't seem like that long. So apparently this is just a big collection of their covers. Of course, you got Bat Boy, the classic Bat Boy there. I haven't had any time to look, open this. The Greatest Heroes. Yeah, so that... <laughs> I don't know if you can see this one here. They got Bill Clinton. Uh, Bill catches Hillary with space alien. <laughs> that actually happened. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, just a fun walk down memory lane here, I guess, with all these, all these covers. And look, there's a list of the supporters. See my on there? Yeah, look, they got my. Oh, well, you can't see this, <laughs> but my name is actually on this list of the people who supported the Kickstarter. Pretty cool. And uh, look, there you go, Moses. I had a GPS. I bet you didn't know that. So uh, I'm going to have a good time looking through this. C 
secret. Why did the U.S. kill approved Miracle Youth drug? What is government? Why is government covering up major energy <laughs> breakthrough? <laughs> you know, some of this sounds surprisingly timely, even though I guess it's at least 15 years old for some of these, these items. 3,000 year old mummy has baby boy. Hmm. Well, anyway, I don't know if you'll be able to get these if you didn't support the Kickstarter or not, but <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to getting into that. All right, anyway, back to the quotation. Uh, so I was looking for quotes by R.A. Salvatore. And, of course, a writer, you would expect, would have many great quotations. Thus, <laughs> they're a great writer. <laughs> they tend to have a way with words, you know. Uh, but I found one that I thought was really good. He's got a bunch of good ones. Uh, but I just thought this one really just it did something for me. It goes something like this. How many people long for that, quote-unquote, past, simpler, and better world, unquote, I wonder, without ever recognizing the truth that perhaps it was they who were simpler and better and not the world around them. So ponder on that and see you guys next time. Sometimes good, sometimes bad.